Hello and welcome to tutorial 70 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation easy language programming. If you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com. That's M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X.com. Sign up for our email list and I'll be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or programs. So somebody on the list had asked me, how could we create a line on one chart such that if we move that line, the uh, line would maintain the same level but on a different chart so you'll see what i mean here in a moment so for example on the uh, left hand side of my screen you can see we've got a 600 tick bar open for the e-mini s&p e-mini and on the right hand side of the screen we've got a 60 tick bar open for the s&p e-mini and what happens is if i move the line on the left hand chart you'll see that the line moves on the right hand chart and uh, the way that I've done this is using the global dictionary that is available in TradeStation 9 and uh, I just want to demonstrate the two programs that uh, that make this happen now one of them we have applied to this chart I've called the GDIC line sender and the other is the GDIC line receiver and these are just applied to the chart if we look at uh, analysis techniques for instance for this one you'll see we've got the the sender applied and if you were to click on this chart and click uh, format analysis techniques you'll see we've got the receiver so what I'm going to do is just talk you through those programs and uh, hopefully you might be able to use this technique in some of your programs so Okay, so let's look at the programs. And uh, as I say, we've got two programs, the sender and the receiver. So let's first of all look at the sender. Now, the first thing you'll notice is we're use, using the EL system dot collections namespace. And you might be wondering, well, how do we know that we need to include that namespace? Well, if we were to go to dictionary and do a search for global dictionary, as I've already done here, you'll see that it tells us that global dictionary is in the EL system dot collections namespace. So I've added that at the top there. Then let's just go through the variables. Uh, first of all, the uh, intrabar persist, this is the value that we're gonna be putting into the uh, global variable. And I've declared that as an intrabar persist double. We're then uh, setting up, or rather declaring the global dictionary and we're gonna call that line gdict. That's just our name for it, and we're putting a null in there. Then I've got a double variable into which we're gonna store the value of the midline, and then the uh, an integer for the line reference. Now we're creating a method to start with, which is a little bit like a function. It has to be declared at the top of the program, and what this does is updates the uh, global dictionary. And global dictionaries are made of um, value key value pairs. In this case, we're calling the key line val. We're just giving it a name, line val. And into that, within the global dictionary, we're putting my send val. And we'll be calculating that in a moment. So when this program first runs, what we're gonna do is create the global dictionary using the syntax line gdict equals global dictionary dot create. We're calculating the mid line, uh, the, the value uh, halfway up the chart which is going to be the initial line value. And we do that using get, get app info for the AI highest display value and the AI lowest display value. If you're not familiar with get app info, info I suggest just right click on that and you'll see a definition. And uh, we're finding the average of those two values. Then we're drawing an initial line using the, uh, the date time, date time, and this midline that we've just created. And we're storing the reference for that in line ref. And then we're extending to the right the line created with a reference line ref and uh, again we've used TL functions uh, quite extensively and uh, you can right click to see the syntax there so what we're storing in the uh, my send value is the TL get end value of the line so if we move the line then this will uh, provided we get a tick on the chart it's going to store the value in my line my uh, send val and then when we do the update gdict which if you recall is the method that we've created at the top of the program then that my send val that we've just queried from the line is stored in the key value pair line val my send val so that's putting the information into the global dictionary we now need to re retrieve it on the other chart 
To do that, we use the uh, the global dict line receiver indicator. Again, we've uh, we've declared the namespace at the top. Uh, we've got uh, instead of uh, I think it was my send val, we've got my received val, and we're setting that up as a uh, intrapar persist double variable. We've got the global dictionary here, which we're going to call line gdict. We've got uh, a uh, similar to the sending program, we're creating a variable called midline, and uh, that's a, set up as a double and an integer line ref. And then uh, what we've got here is another method which we're calling move line. Again, we're not returning a value, so we need to uh, say that's void. And then this is moving the line. So what it's simply doing is using set begin and set end to move the line with this line ref to these. Uh, the particular level that we're getting out of the global dictionary. So when we first, when this first runs on the chart, we create the global dictionary just like we did before. Now, with global dictionaries, if there is already a global dictionary in existence, it doesn't create a new one. It just uses the one that's there. So we can, uh, we're going to be using the line gdict global dictionary. Again, we calculate the initial value for midline so that we can draw an initial line on the chart and we're going to set the extension right and left for that line using the TL set extension right TL set extension left then what we're doing down the program we're saying if in the global dictionary line gdict if that contains a key value pair that's not false then my received val is going to be equal to line gdict items line value as type double. So we're storing into my received val the value that was in the global dictionary under line val. Now I added a print statement here just so that we could uh, check that we're getting the value uh, sent correctly and received correctly. But then we're calling the method move line. So having stored the uh, my, my received val stores the value that's been passed into the global dictionary by the sending program we can then go to move line and if you recall move line takes the line and it moves it to the value that's been stored in the global dictionary and then in, uh, in such a way we get the lines moving so that the line is at the same level on both the uh, sending and the receiving chart. So anyway, I hope uh, maybe that gives you some ideas of uh, how perhaps you could use the uh, global dictionary. This is a very simple example. If you uh, if you do want to download these programs, I will make them available for a nominal fee at markplex.com. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.